Hello, welcome to today's video. Today I will be introducing you to George Holmes Howison. He's a philosopher of great renown, but he's fallen into obscurity in the past hundred years. Uh, this is the book that I'll be interesting introducing you to. It's called The Limits of Evolution and Other Essays Illustrating the Metaphysical Theory of Personal Idealism by George Holmes Howison. And he lived from, I believe, 1882, or, let's see, no, earlier than that. I think the essays were, okay, so he was born in 1834, and he died in 1916. He was a professor of philosophy at the University of California at uh, the San Francisco location, or Berkeley, uh, but this is before the university was called Berkeley. Uh, George Berkeley, the philosopher, was actually uh, subordinate to George Holmes Howison. Uh, Berkeley is more widely known. Uh, he gave a simpler uh, take on the metaphysical philosophy of idealism. Uh, and Howison's version is to be distinguished from Berkeley's version in that he called it personal idealism. So he took idealism a step farther than Berkeley did, and he reasoned that uh, it's uh, a rational fact that uh, we cannot validate any other theory of reality than one that is based on human consciousness. So idealism essentially denies the existence of a self-existing or uh, independent physical reality, independent from the human mind, that is, and that reality is essentially product of human consciousness. And in calling his version personal idealism, he also reasoned that uh, our experience of reality validates the idea that at the center of the universe is actually personality and intention and essentially human intelligence. Uh, and he goes to great lengths to show that all of that might be deduced from our experiences. So uh, in this book, he has like five different essays of preface in which he gives a brief introduction to the concept of personal idealism. And then he breaks it down into other categories uh, and writes about various things. He writes about, I mean, the title essay is The Limit of Evolution. Evolution, uh, the philosophy of Darwin, where he observed the transmutation of species and determined that this was driven by uh, the survival of the fittest, meaning that uh, small genetic mutations would occur, allowing certain individuals to compete more successfully in a changing world, and then uh, they would also be more successful with reproductive activities, and so their offspring would come to predominate over offsprings of those who did not um, evolve or transmutate and so uh, species would gradually change over time as a product of natural selection. So uh, Howison addresses uh, how evolution, the concept of evolution, uh, has limits and it doesn't necessarily apply to the entirety of uh, human experience. Okay, so then he has an essay called Modern Science and Pantheism, in which he compares, uh, you know, empirical science, physicalism, physical only 
science, uh, he relates it to the concept of pantheism, which is the idea that uh, the divine is present in all phenomena in the universe. Okay. Then he talks about art and poetry. Uh, he talks about German philosophy. Uh, and then he has an essay titled Human Immortality, It's Positive Argument. So uh, he pre presents a rational analysis of our experience and shows that it, if properly understood, gives evidence that we are essentially immortal. Uh, and not only uh, if you're thinking, well, there's life beyond the grave, that kind of immortality, but he deduces that the same immortality can be projected into the past to show that uh, individual humans actually have their basis uh, prior to time and that time is a phenomena that we in fact create as individuals so it's a highly intriguing essay uh, and then the final essay of the book is the harmony of determinism and freedom okay so determinism is taken to mean uh, well okay if God created the universe and is omniscient meaning he knows all things uh, how is it that we <coughs> as individuals have any sort of freedom and that we're not some sort of robot or puppet because if he knows everything past and future and all of our potential choices uh, how is it that he being the cause of reality doesn't in fact determine reality to a degree that negates the idea of human freedom. Okay, and he shows that determinism, meaning that there is divine causation by a supreme being, in fact may be viewed as harmonious with our freedom, and he doesn't mean just uh, any sort of freedom that is mere lip service, uh, but he takes the concept of human freedom to the absolute level, meaning that we essentially create ourselves. So how is it that we can be created by God and yet be created by ourselves and uh, continuously create ourselves uh, within an order that was essentially put in place by the divine? Okay, so that is an extremely complicated essay uh, and and so is the other one on uh, human immortality okay so I've made a few notes uh, that you know so I highly recommend that you acquire this book for yourself you know you can get ordered off the internet you know rare book search uh, it's not impossible to get this 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 copy was printed you know I don't know fairly recently and most of these books of this type can be had, you know, like in the print-on-demand uh, thing. So, you know, I really recommend that you get this book for yourself. Uh, this one was published by Hard Press Publishing. And their website is hardpress.net. So, uh, you know, uh, like these essays are deep and complicated and subtle and so you know because it's very subtle it requires a very patient and steady meditative approach and by meditative I mean that it'll probably require you to ponder a certain phrase or sentence until it's fully grasped you know uh, Howison you know didn't write much and it was said that he didn't write much because he was so much of a perfectionist that he, in addressing these topics, uh, found it so challenging to make his point clear and unmistakable that uh, he would work on, you know, the essays for many years before he'd feel that they were into sufficient shape for publishing. Uh, 
So, you know, he doesn't really waste many words, uh, and but it's deep. And, y- you know, y- you can't just think that you're just going to pick it up and whip through it and it's going to all be crystal clear on the first take because, you know, uh, the, particularly the one on human immortality, you know, I read it three or four times and sort of thought about it repeatedly. Uh, and also, you know, I, I'm in the habit of reading metaphysics and philosophy. Uh, and so I would, you know, take a phrase and, and think about it in the context of other philosophers, particularly Emanuel Swedenborg. Uh, and, you know, I found gradual clarity in it. Uh, so, you know, the development of true rationality is the process of applying ratios. So I would form a ratio between, you know, different semantics or different ways to express similar ideas. Uh, and you got to like hold, you know, a concept or a phrase in your, you know, mental hands for a while and turn it over and think about it. Uh, but when you reach a point where you sort of get it, it's so liberating, you know, because I really feel like in reading this book and studying it, uh, I attained a much deeper, far, far deeper understanding of uh, myself and the nature of reality. Uh, and it and it really you know brought me sort of a gigantic sense of relief you know uh, to be in possession of clarity is is a wonderful thing you know it really is and it's worth the effort okay uh, but it's a slow and deliberate digestive activity okay so now the the book on or the essay on determinism and freedom uh, you know the main issue is basically divine causation, okay? So that it says that we're going to try to understand how the universe is caused by the divine, okay? By the supreme being, okay? Now, God in modern times has undergone an evolution, the concept of God, okay? So you know, for many centuries, uh, I think humanity was willing to entertain the notion of, you know, something of, you know, like a Santa Claus type figure as God, where he's sitting up on high on a cloud looking down and periodically, you know, granting uh, reality to, you know, move in a certain way according to his plan uh, and that he was sort of manipulating us for our own good or you know like you would pray and ask for his favorable dispensation towards you uh and that idea you know is fairly childish you know it really is uh we know that there's order in the universe and uh we sense that if our decisions are to be meaningful and real then it has to be within order and not just at the whim of you know this all-powerful being you know if 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 that's all it is is that we're just you know gaining uh the you know good graces of a divine being that uh you know might be persuaded one way or the other uh that just it just it doesn't make you know an intuitive sense because we we need the concept of justice and order to function for our for our our minds to function properly we need to feel that we're working within a framework that is knowable and predictable and works according to law and and uh, you know our sense of what is good and true uh, is really based on an underlying idea of order, you know, that uh, we can figure out what's good if we can establish the boundaries of whatever it is, you know, like the the framework in which it finds itself. Uh, does it fit? Does it harmonize? Uh, is it, you know, right in the context? And so the context is important. Uh, so, you know, if you're still sort of just in the process of separating from that Santa Claus idea of God, it's okay to call yourself an agnostic. 
and to be challenged to then replace it with a more complete idea of God. And that's what these essays are all about, and that's what they'll do for you if you'll take the time to read them. Okay, so, so divine causation means that a supreme being makes things happen. He determines the condition of reality, okay? But now freedom is the space where we can exist within that reality without being robots or puppets, okay? Uh, so let's, let's look at uh, animals in comparison to human beings, okay? So now a shark, you know, as a apex predator is out roaming a vast sea and he's free to follow his instincts without a whole lot of hindrance you know he can swim around wherever he wishes there's essentially no fences uh, he can come and go wherever he, he feels he wants to and he can bite whatever he wants to but now let's say that somehow that shark might be endowed with a contemplative imagination one that like human being has and exposure to knowledge of an alternative existence. So now his physiology would limit him in his ability to realize any other existence than the one that he's conducting at the moment. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is that a shark does not have a contemplative imagination, and uh, nor does any animal. But this is like the, the mark of humanity is that we do have an additional level of consciousness that allows us to imaginatively contemplate alternatives uh, and meaning. And we then have an ability, although uh, it's largely limited, to act upon those imaginations and those contemplations and strive to change our reality. So we have, obviously, in comparison to animals, a much greater level of freedom. But, you know, did any of us, like, at our birth, choose our parents or choose our society into which we were born or choose our place and time? You know, and often I feel like an anachronism, meaning that I might have been happier in a different age, you know. Uh, and I sort of lament not being born, you know, at a time when reality was different, you know. And uh, might have I chosen otherwise? And because I was un not allowed to choose the conditions of my birth, uh, it seems that my freedom is limited. Uh, and so, because I wasn't in control of the context in which my consciousness first apparently came into being, uh, that limitation seems to negate everything going forward. You know, because if I couldn't have chosen at the start, uh, you know, like my cards, then how can I be said to be free? I was given a certain set of cards and said, play. And, and that's not fair, that's not free, okay? Real freedom would be to choose one's own cards and choose the, the playing field. So, uh, you know, we obviously have more freedom than a shark, but do we have real freedom, okay? So, uh, what Howison proceeds to argue is that we do in fact have that sort of real freedom that goes all the way back to the beginning or the source of time. Uh, and, you know, it's a really complex development where he goes uh, that, you know, will require you to, you know, read very slowly and, uh, you know, iron things out uh, and consider alternatives to your current worldview. You know, most of us uh, haven't much opportunity to step outside of, of our own cultural context, and we may have been born with a certain set of ideas, uh, like 
uh, atheistic physicalism or you know uh, Catholicism or Islam or you know whatever it is but and a lot of us maybe don't even have a chosen worldview and we're kind of just like floating along and so many notions about reality may be just drifting in and out of our heads and we're just kind of like in the moment trying to make the best choice uh, you know with the pandemic of course we're suddenly f really faced on a daily basis with our mortality and so hopefully uh, that inspiration of the constant reminder of of death uh, and you know the deeper questions surrounding you know the causation of say sickness and whatnot will inspire your willingness to you know look d more deeply so you know I highly recommend this book particularly the last two essays the one on human immortality and uh, determinism and human freedom uh, I think they will really help you to understand reality in, in a way that uh, will really like liberate you and, and give you a breath of fresh air in your uh, daily life in the waking world you know and uh, help make sense of so many things that don't make sense uh, if you are just looking at them in terms of you know is life being like say a biochemical process uh, there's so many things that do not uh, find a peaceful resting place within that paradigm you know if you believe that human life is just a lucky fortuitous you know collection of random particles that somehow spontaneously creates human consciousness and then suddenly uh, that chemical process fails and we cease to exist uh, I think most people's intuitive sense rebels against that philosophy uh, we have a certain sense within us that time and space uh, have a greater meaning than you know simply what we get from a clock or a telescope uh, so uh, I encourage you to become a philosopher particularly a metaphysical philosopher and I think you know even though the content of this book is extremely challenging uh, with some patience uh, it's not impenetrable and it's in my opinion uh, so universal the, the 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 choice of words that he presents us with is very un universal you know like a guy like Swedenborg or uh, you know like Indian philosophy or Buddhist philosophy uh, is so you know dependent their the vocabularies are dependent on you know a traditional uh, way of, of understanding these things you know so Swedenborg you know is very much a philosopher who takes his vocabularies from the Bible you know the beautiful thing about Swedenborg is that he universalizes them and, and sees within the you know sort of narrow traditional uh, Christian vocabulary and he you know opens it up to the universal uh, well with Howison he really just starts out with the universal and sticks with it so he doesn't spend much time talking about Jesus even though he professed to be a Christian uh, the people in his day couldn't understand his understanding of Christianity uh, because it was so universal and he spent so much time speaking in terms that uh, didn't include you know say Bible references or you know quoting scripture so uh, anyway get this book and read it <laughs> particularly the last two essays are really really good uh, you know I really have gained a proper feeling for my own immortality and in realizing my true freedom uh, which includes uh, the past 
amazingly. Uh, I feel very liberated from the past as a controlling element in my worldview. Uh, I can see that, you know, who I was born to and the choices, good and bad, that I made, uh, they don't determine my reality going forward and they don't even determine uh, the real nature of history. Uh, and history is actually a dynamic reality. And, you know, uh, that right there is, you know, sort of an abstract, you know, esoteric type statement. Uh, but Howison has a brilliant way of making that a statement that is entirely rational. Uh, so, uh, I'm not going to try to like read the entire book to you, uh, but uh, you know, if you want to understand uh, human reality in a much deeper way, uh, it'll take some work, uh, but it's worth the effort. So, get this book, The Limits of Evolution, by George Holmes Howison. It's a great book. So I wish you well, and I'll see you next time.